Hi peeps, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about inspiring TV shows that help me flesh out some of my ghostly scenes and some of my murder scenes. So if that sounds interesting, stick around, make sure you're signed up to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified when I have new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that so that it helps the algorithms. So Kaylee and I welcome you in. It's been a long time since I've introduced myself in my videos. Um, if you don't know who I am, if you're new to my channel, I am a New York Times, USA Today, and Publishers Weekly bestselling author. I am Yasmin Gallinorn. I spent 20 years in traditional publishing, and I've spent the last four, five now, going into year five, in indie, and I'm loving it. So that's just a bit about who I am. This is Kaylee, one of our four kitties. She helps me with a lot of the videos. So yeah, today I've been asked a lot where I get inspiration for all the books that I write. I've got over 70 some books out. And how do I get inspired? Well, first, I never have a lack of inspiration. I always have ideas going on. And because I have a strong background in working with the paranormal, and I've been in the craft over 40 years, and I've dealt with ghosts and spirits and various things like that. I already have a, a background in that. So I've got had experiences and I draw on those and exacerbate them and change them up and stuff. Um, so I draw on my own life or experience. But say you don't have a background like that and you want to write an ooh spooky book, what would I recommend? I recommend TV. Watching TV shows is one of the best places I find inspiration for new ideas because seeing an, you know, a case or something, I'll be thinking, wow, that's weird. What if it were like this? What if it were like that? So I'm going to give you a list of um, four paranormal shows that I find very helpful. And I'm going to give you a list of four um, criminal shows that can spark off all sorts of imagination and ideas and things like that. I will give you one caveat with the criminal shows. If you are easily triggered, be careful because there are, there are some horrific people out there and there are some truly evil people out there. And some of these shows go into that. I mean, it's, it's hard to watch some of them, but I, I find I can deal with that better than reading about stuff like this because my own imagination is more horrific than just about anything people can think of. So one of my favorite shows, very favorite shows, I love the show. I really, truly feel that the um, psychic is very real. I actually follow her on Twitter, she follows me, and I, having been in the paranormal field, the magical field, for 40 some years, I have a good sense of people, and she's real, you know, she, she feels real to me, so it's the Dead Files. I absolutely love the Dead Files, and some of the stuff that comes up on there is absolutely compelling. And it's frightening, but it also gives you a good place to begin and go, wow, okay, if I, okay, this happened, you know, there, there's a poltergeist here. What if I have a poltergeist and it's doing this? You know, it, it gives you a lot of good jumping off places. Um, I highly recommend going back and watching some of the back episodes. I actually bought all the seasons because I, I watch and rewatch them. Mostly because I'm just fascinated by this and 
it's amazing what's out there. And some of this is stuff that I've dealt with before that I have personally encountered as well, or friends have encountered, like the shadow men. Shadow men are terrifying. If you were scared of the shadow man seen in Autumn Thorns, yeah, well, there's a reason that's scary. I have a friend who, when she was a child, there was a shadow man following her. And it was petrifying. I mean, the concept of these creatures coming into your space and being able to get in, even if you ward against them, is, is very frightening. Another show that I absolutely love is A Haunting. Um, now, granted, they tend to mainly deal with demonic stuff or everything seems to be a demon there. Uh, whereas I think in some cases it may be a ghost haunting the place or something like that. And, you know, it's like I, I also think people can invite things in by stuff that they do. I'm, I'm very clear to the people I've taught magic to in the past. Don't use an Ouija board. You're asking for trouble. It's a portal. You know, it is a portal. You are just inviting in people. And you don't know if these spirits are lying or what. But uh, needless to say, the, the show A Haunting has a lot of very creepy things in it. Um, I do believe a lot of that happened, you know. I think sometimes the people had a part in spurring on what happened. Um, and of course, you know, there's always the chance for someone to be lying. But... It, regardless of that fact, it's got a lot of good inspiration in it. A third one is an old show, and I think it may still be made on Netflix. I think it may still be in production. I'm not clear on that yet, um, but it's Unsolved Mysteries. Now, sometimes it's just missing people who vanished, you know, in plain sight almost. Sometimes it is uh, oriented towards aliens, etc. Sometimes it's oriented towards um, paranormal stuff, but it's a fascinating show and it can give you a lot of, again, jumping off places if you are stuck for an idea. And a fourth is called Haunted and it's on Netflix. Um, it's supposedly real cases. I honestly don't know one way or another, but Anna, it's good, it's good fodder for the imagination and really creepy. Um, there were there were times there where I was questioning, I'm not sure about this, whether it actually happened or not, but whether it happened or not, it fuels the imagination. And that's what we're talking about today is fueling your imagination. It's not that you take that idea and write it out. It's that you take in that idea, let it percolate, and let something new form that was spurred on. That's what recharging is about. That's what getting inspiration is about. It's not getting an actual idea. It's about using what you're seeing to create new ideas. Now, on the criminal side of things, I love cold case files. I absolutely love that show. It's fascinating. There are many seasons of it. Um, I like seeing old crimes being solved because I hear Morgan in the background. I like seeing old crimes being solved because it puts to rest the families who, of the victims who are left hanging. Um, it actually puts them to to some sort of closure. And I think that's important. Whenever you've had a family member who's been a victim of a violent crime, and I have, um, it's nice to try and get closure out of that. Uh, second is forensic files. Fascinating what they can find out through DNA, through examination of the evidence. And it's only grown over the years in terms of our abilities to find out information in terms of, to help 
solve crimes. It also gives you a good idea of the actual legal process that we have to go through. So it will help you understand what is possible, what isn't. If you're writing fantasy, of course, you can make new things up, but you need to have it so that it sounds plausible. And by knowing what is possible at this point, it helps you create things that seem possible. Uh, killer women. <laughs> and there's another one, and I can't quite remember the name of it, but it was on the Dis ID Discovery Channel, Snapped. Um, women commit crimes in different ways than men. There are very few women who use the same kind of force that men do. And so it's fascinating to see the difference between what women generally do and what men do. Now, the results can be just as horrific. And it's not saying women can't like go out and bludgeon somebody or, you know, shoot up a school or something. But the fact is women tend to use other methods than men. Uh, another one is Dark Tourist. Now, it's not really a crime scene show, and it's not a paranormal show, but it looks into odd places. Like, they took a look into, I think, Chernobyl or somewhere around there. Um, some of the plants, that you know, nuclear power plant that went down and what it is like there now and the radiation levels. Um he goes and visits all these sort of ominous places. And some of them are very historical, some are more modern, but it's really interesting. And it again can inspire the imagination as to new settings or new concepts that you might think of. The mind is not, the mind is not an infinite well without refilling it, neither is the writing spirit. As writers, we need to recharge ourselves. We need to fill that well. Because when you write and you put so much into a book, you kind of drain yourself of energy and inspiration to a point. And there will be new things come in again. But it helps to have a source to recharge with. So I'm I'm a huge media junkie, especially TV and movies. Um, it's October. I'm in my October movie phase, which means I am watching this huge list of movies every year. I watch them. Uh, they're like a ritual, and they also inspire me. And since I watch them only once a year, I don't get really tired of them. I'm into my autumn movie binge, working my way through them. I watch them when I'm doing blogging, when I'm playing games, when I'm not writing. Um, I don't watch movies or shows when I'm writing, except during the five minutes or so I take as a break between writing sprints. So I don't really watch much while I'm actually writing. But when I'm done with my writing for the day and I start on other admin work or stuff, yeah, I watch movies, I watch TV, I watch shows. So that gives you an idea of where I get some of my inspiration. I hope this helps you in the comments. Tell me what inspires you, whether it is for writing, whether it is for um, just your personal enrichment. What do you find inspiring? What do you watch to to Fill that well to recharge yourself. And, uh, you know, since we're into autumn, let's make it autumn themed or, you know, ooh, spooky themed. Uh, tell me in the comments. Maybe I'll get a new, you know, idea for something to watch. Or maybe what I've presented to you, you'll have an idea on something new to watch. And I hope to see you next week. Remember, sometime during this coming week, or the week after that, I'm not sure which, I will be putting up a vlog of my interview with my friend who is an astrologer, and she does my charts. So look for that as an upcoming video, and I'll be back next Saturday um, once again 
with more on writing, on my books, on my life in general. And I hope you have a very happy weekend and a good week to come. Bright blessings. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and take care. <music>